This is part four of a five-part video series on local VFR and uncontrolled airfield operations. On this sortie, we depart 17 left at Vance Air Force Base, fly the planned stereo route, cancel IFR, and receive radar vectors from the instructor pilot for GPS 36 at NTA Alva, circle to runway 18, and discuss how to depart VFR for a North MOA or recover back to Vance. When setting the GPS up during ground ops, load flight plan one delete the unneeded points, add ALVA, and load the GPS 36 approach. The procedure of how to load a GPS approach is found in the Dash 1, page 1-128, titled Selecting and Loading GPS Not Precision Approaches. When setting up the RMU on the ground, recommend putting the ALVA AWOS frequency into the standby VHF and leave low ops in primary. Be sure to review the planned stereo route on the ground as there are multiple altitude changes on this departure. The planned departure starts the same way as the Delta and Cormie stereo routes. Passing Membry, climb to 6,000 feet on the 359 radial. If the Vance departure controller advises there are no traffic conflicts between you and Alva and weather permits, you may elect to cancel IFR at this point. Once VFR, you may navigate pilot's discretion and descend to an appropriate VFR altitude. If still on the planned stereo route at this point in the sortie, maintain 6,000 feet from Josno to Helbo. If you haven't already, listen to the Alva AWOS and update your altimeter setting. At this point, normally you would have canceled IFR. If weather or traffic did not permit before now, after Helbo, descend to 4,000 feet and, weather permitting, cancel IFR before reaching plans. As seen here, we are now VFR 16 miles east of the final approach fix, on an approximate downwind heading and maintaining a VFR altitude. Fly the heading and altitude given by your instructor and set up the avionics for the approach. Setting up the avionics for a GPS approach is an often goofed up process in the T6. A common technique used in this process for the T6 is bold roto, though the 11248 shortens that mnemonic to LD rod. Regardless of the technique you use to set up the approach, the Dash 1 spells out how to execute GPS vectors to final in the paragraph named General Procedure for GPS Non-Precision Approaches. Once the approach is set up, brief it up. The aircraft is now on a right dogleg to final. Notice on the GPS the aircraft is 5 miles from the final approach fix and 2 miles right of the final approach course. The Dash 1 says once established inbound and prior to 2 miles from the final approach fix, deselect OBS in the GPS. Per the 11.217 and AIM, you are established inbound on a GPS course when within one times the required accuracy for the segment. In the terminal mode, which is 2 to 30 miles from the final approach fix, the GPS is in approach armed mode. In this mode, the CDI scale is one nautical mile from course center, which equates to two dot CDI deflection. Therefore, when the CDI is at two dot deflection or less, you are established inbound and should deselect OBS. This would also be a good time to do a radio call on the CTAF, which should sound something like, Alba traffic, military T6, 10 miles south of the airfield for the left downwind 18, Alba. At two miles from the final approach fix, the CDI will change from blue to green if the GPS is out of OBS. At this point, you should also be configured. On a GPS approach, some pilots alter their gear confirmation by saying, check handle down, four green, flaps take off. Pilots that use this callout technique are referring to the three green landing gear indicators and the green CDI needle. If you forget to deselect OBS prior to the final approach fix, leave the GPS alone, do not descend, and coordinate for a re-vector to final to try again. The GPS is already set for the re-attempt. If RAIM is lost during the approach, press the GPS approach button on either the ADI or HSI, deconfigure the aircraft, maintain the final approach or missed approach altitude as appropriate, execute the missed approach and coordinate with ATC or the instructor for the next approach. Were this to be flown as a straight in approach, you must be at or above 2,080 feet until 1.8 nautical miles from the runway. Because we are circling to runway 18, our MDA is above the step-down fixed altitude, so in this case, the step-down fixed altitude does not apply. 
In the event you have to go missed approach due to not being in a safe position to land or not having the airfield environment in sight during the instrument or visual portion of the maneuver, set the PCL to max, pitch up 10 to 15 degrees nose high, deconfigure the aircraft, and execute the missed approach for the approach just flown. The GPS will not automatically cycle past the missed approach point. This must be done manually by pushing direct, then enter. Assuming the airfield environment is in sight, circling can be commenced once within the protected terrain clearance radius. As a Category B aircraft, the protected airspace radius for the T-6 is 1.5 nautical miles from the runway threshold, unless the airfield has an expanded circling area as denoted by the negative C. To find your expanded radius, refer to the Terminal Procedures Supplement in ForeFlight. As seen here, the protected area for us on this particular approach at ALVA is 1.8 nautical miles from the threshold. This chart is also found in the 11217. At 1.8 DME from the runway, start your circle maneuver. When practicing circling, the training standard is to be at circling MDA prior to the circling radius DME. Per the T6 operating standards, you must announce when you've reached MDA by saying MDA. The instructor will either say runway in sight or runway not in sight. If told runway in sight, commence the circle once you've reached 1.8 nautical miles from the threshold. If told runway not in sight, execute the missed approach. For grading purposes, the course training standard throughout the maneuver is to maintain circling MDA plus 100 feet and minus 0 feet until base light. If the circling procedure is not done for training and weather permits, it is advisable to level off at the traffic pattern altitude rather than going all the way down to circling MDA. Because runway 18 at ALVA uses normal left-hand pattern turns, your initial turn at 1.8 DME should be to the right as seen here. You are aiming to fly normal runway spacing. To get this spacing, fly a 45 degree intercept heading to downwind. Once wings level, hold this heading for 30 seconds and then turn to parallel the runway. You can also fly 30 degree intercept heading for 45 seconds. Easier yet, use section lines to judge spacing from the runway. At 500 feet AGL, the wingtip should be on the runway when wings level on the downwind. About halfway through the base turn, you will be on a 3 degree glide slope, so this is where you descend from your MDA. On a subsequent visual traffic pattern, a straight-in is being practiced. Here the aircraft is a little more than a mile from the runway, just above 300 feet AGL. As discussed in part 2, depart ALVA on the upwind, or 45 degrees left of upwind. Climb to 5,500 feet, weather permitting, and once above 1,500 feet AGL, turn to the southeast. Climbing to 5,500 feet will keep you under the north low MOAs and above the dog face traffic pattern. In the GPS, load Flight Plan 5 for the North MOAs, or 7 or 9 if going back to Vance. If you'd like, you could fly from Alva direct to Pong Creek, or you could follow the 19 Demi Road by OBSing Ponk and flying inbound on the 270 radial. Outside the cockpit, this is what the 19 Demi Road eastbound looks like. This position is under MOA Area 1. Put your local squawk of 42 whatever back into the transponder and listen to the Vance ATIS. Then call up Vance Approach, Uniform Channel 8. Get their attention by saying, Approach North, Texan 13. The controller will likely respond with, Texan 13, Ident, go ahead. Your radio call should sound something like, Texan 13, level 5500, 8 miles southwest of Dogface, request North Low MOA. Or, request recovery east side with the ATIS. Or, Request VFR flight falling to Echo with ATIS. If you're in the North MOA, once complete, you can use Flight Plan 5 to initially turn to Pond Creek as it happens to be directly under the southwest corner of Area 8. On the HSI, notice the heading bug is set to a heading that would take you to that corner of Area 8. Past Pond Creek, next cross Kremlin between 2,800 feet and 4,000 feet at 230 knots. At Kremlin, you are 5 miles from Echo, so do your radio call. Texan 13 Echo. The controller will say contact RSCU or tower channel 4. Acknowledge with your call sign, do your guts check, and descend to 2300 feet. 